Hello everyone, and welcome to Ghostmaster, a game of thrills and chills, spooks and spirits, a game that goes bump in the night. So, so yeah, uh, this is Ghostmaster. Um, I forget when this game came out. It's actually, uh, I don't know how many people know about this. Uh, I actually lost this game for a really long time, um, but that's not here nor there. Uh, the basic premise of this game is that we are a go- well, it's right there in the title. We are a ghost master. We command a troop of spirits to scare the living daylights out of the mortal realm. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's a pretty fun, pretty goofy game. Uh, let's go ahead and let's get right into it. It's a new game. <laughs> So, in keeping with the kind of goofiness of this game, like, obviously this is supposed to represent a, uh, a Ouija board, but it's not a typical Ouija board. It's not like set out in the in the regular Ouija board fashion. As you can see, our cursor is a little whatever the hell that thing is. Spirit, please tell us your name. If you wait too long to pick a name, they, 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 they talk to you and they're like, oh, please, please tell us your name. Uh, so, again, in keeping with the kind of goofy and fun version of this name, our, our name is going to be... Boogris. I have no idea if I'm going to spell this right, but this is how I'm going to pronounce it. It's Boogris. Boogris! So, let's do this. So that was the opening of the game, obviously. Um, the first two places that are opening to us is the, the opening mission, the Haunting 101, and the Ghoul Room! And we'll be going into the Ghoul Room a little bit later. Uh, for right now, just to kind of keep this video a little bit short, we're just going to go ahead and jump right into the first level. And I'll kind of explain shit as we go. So here we go, Haunting 101! You are ready for your field training, young Ghost Master? We are taking you to the Kappa Lambda sorority house in Gravenville University. Only a small number of sorority girls are in residence at the moment, but scaring them all away should be a sufficient test of your abilities. 
All right. Um, so this is the team selection. Uh, over here is where we can select our our ghouls, our our our, our, our spirits, our disturbances, our 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 ghosts and our, our ghosts and ghouls, and so on and so forth. I keep trying to think of funny rhyming jokes, but like ghouls and fools. Like <laughs> I keep stumbling. Anyway, um, so for this first mission, we can only have four. Uh, I think we can only have four for every mission that we go on. I forget right now. It's actually been a while since I've played this game. Uh, but just to kind of a quick rundown. So these are spirits. We start off with uh, a gremlin and a horde monster. Cogjammer and Clatterclaws. Disturbances. We have Boo! Who is a spook. Uh, Whirlwind, who is a poltergeist. We have two elementals. An air and an earth. Aether and stonewall. No vapors. One frightener. Uh, a phantom shiver and specter ghastly um you might you you'll notice all of them except for i believe the i don't think the elementals actually showed up in the opening cutscene i had to look away for a few seconds but you notice all these other ones that we have uh did actually show up at one point or another um so one, one more quick thing you'll, you'll notice that uh two of our of our spirits um whirlwind and ghastly are actually grayed out this is because that um if I click on it, no. Okay, so here it'll say fetter is violence. This will actually know that on your on, on this map there are no fetters for ghastly to be attached to. A, a fetter a fetter is like you attach your spirit. To, I'll, I'll I'll go into it more in the game, but just know that if if they're grayed out, you cannot take them. Like, they'll basically be useless on this mission because they won't have a fetter to attach to. Um, but for this first mission, we'll just go ahead and use the recommended team, which is Cogjammer, Clatterclaws, Boo, and Shiver. Um, I'm going to say his name like that pretty much for the entire game, so get used to it. So let me go. here we go. Drive the Lambda girls from their sorority house. All right. So this is the area. The basic controls are you uh, hold down the right mouse button to rotate. You can also use these down here. Uh, the arrows move around. Uh, page up and page down changes levels. Um, insert and delete zooms in and out, but so does the mouse wheel, which I'll be using that. Uh, on the left here are our spooks, our spirits. Uh, as you can see, there are more options. There's up to eight slots that we can take with us. And then down here, um, on almost every map, there'll be a, at least one spirit who is chained here. They are an unlockable. And as you can see, this is Weather Witch. Uh, we'll get to her in a second. On the right, you can see all of the all of the the humans, the fleshlings, the bags of meat, whatever you want to call them who are actually on the map. If we select them, we can click view. It'll show us, uh, um, what is that, a cinematic camera view of what they're doing. We can do go to, which will just center the map on them. We can do POV, so we can see through their eyes and hear them breathing. It's rather quite creepy. We click on bio, and bio gives us a basic rundown. So this is Cindy Haddock. Cindy has a highly skeptical mind and is spooked by loud noises. So the description will kind of give you a little, a little information. I think a train's coming. Damn it. Um, yeah, train. Be back in two seconds. Okay, I think it's gone. Uh, where was I? Right, the bio. <clears throat> so, um, this gives you a slight description of what you can use to scare them. They have a terror, a madness, and a belief bar. Uh, terror is pretty straightforward. You just, and it's also usually the easiest one to max out. If you max out, I believe, any of these bars, they will run away, um, you know, just absolutely freaking out, which is your overall goal. Um, no, actually, I think it's just terror and madness. I think belief uh, pertains to this bar right here, and I'll get to this in a second. Um, so terror, like I said, is pretty straightforward. Madness is a little bit more fun. Uh, I think you get you you actually get more bonuses for driving people insane, um, but it's harder to do, obviously. They have their fears, their subconscious fears, and their mood. Uh, fears come out pretty easily. Subconscious fears will actually, uh, regular fears go towards terror. I believe subconscious goes towards madness. I could be wrong about that, but I think that's how it is. Uh, I don't know, I don't remember what mood does. Um, belief. The more belief that you manage to instill in your victims, the higher this bar goes. And this is your, um, your limiter bar, basically. It's like a plasma. So the higher their belief, the higher this bar goes, and the more of your ghosts and ghouls you can actually put, you can you can attach to the world and do their powers. So, um, 
If you click on their epitaph, it'll give them a... Or for your spirits, I should say. If you click on epitaph, it'll give them a little backstory. It'll list their type, their level, and then their fetter. So Boo is pretty pretty versatile. He can go anywhere inside. Like, as long as it's inside, you can, you can stick him there. So I can put him in any of these rooms, all over the place. Uh, Clatterclaws is the same way. Uh, Clatterclaws is an inside spirit. Cogjammer is a gremlin and can only go on electricals. So like this TV, this stereo, this stereo. Um, if you mouse over something, it'll show you what type of fetter it is. The rug is emotional, which is the only fetter that Shivers can go on. So Shivers is kind of limiting, but he's a more powerful spirit. Um, and that actually kind of goes with it. So since Boo is super versatile, his powers are really cheap. The, the highest plasm you need for his powers is 40 uh, for right now. Um, oh, that's something else. So this is actually called plasm. So it takes plasm to actually bind a spirit to a spot, and then it takes more plasm to activate their powers. So you kind of want to start and like try to build their belief a little bit. Like there's there's a whole a whole thing to it, but I mean there's there's, there's some some kind of subtle strategy. Um, but anyway, so we want we actually want to go ahead and try to free the weather witch. So let's go ahead and talk to her. So when you talk to a spirit that is that is chained to something, in this case, Weather Witch is chained to this vacuum cleaner, um, they kind of give you a hint on how to free them. So we have to do something to this vacuum. Now, something else that kind of happens is this is an electrical thing, so we, we could bind Cogjammer to it, but you cannot bind two spirits to the same fetter. So like I couldn't have Boo and Clatterclaws in the same room. They'd have to be in different rooms. So I cannot bog, bind Cogjammer to this while she is chained to it. But there is a stereo here. So what we want to do is go ahead and click on Cogjammer, bind him to this stereo. And there he is. So now he's, 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 he's hooked into this little radio here. But he doesn't actually do anything because we have his power set to zero. So at zero, not doing anything, he just costs five plasma. And that's it. As we go up in levels, um, like, you know, the different things that we, we click on, he'll actually go ahead and use these powers. Something else that you want to look at is if we click on orders, we can give him, like, we can just kind of have them go hog wild by himself, or we can actually give him orders. So we can tell him to only use power at your current power band, and that's really the only power he has right now. And that's it. That's all, that's all, that's, I think that's the only one he can use. So what that'll do is, like, if I put it at Jinx and I turn that power on, I turn that order on, he will only ever use Jinx, and that is it. But we don't really care for that. Like, I, I kind of just let my spirits go go a little crazy. Um, but yeah, I mean, those, those are just the, the basic basics, but let's go ahead and get to it. So let's go ahead and turn Cogjammer on to Wild and Crazy. The first thing he's going to do is have this whole room go shithouse. And there we go. So, one strategy that you can kind of do is if you set them to lower powers, like if I just do Spark, it's only kind of, you know, it doesn't really do that much. All it really does is, is form to, to raise belief. But as you can see, our, our plasma actually slowly goes down as soon as we start doing stuff. So we actually want to try to try to scare some of these girls. Let's go ahead and bind Boo to this room and turn on Hide and Seek. We'll also go ahead and bind Shivers to this rug and set it all the way up to Numb. Clatterclaws. Uh, there's no one up here right now. Where do I want to bind Clatterclaws? Uh, I don't want to bind Clatterclaws just yet. Oh, yes I do. So we can't actually do anything. Alright, so this is an event happening, and it, it's just revealed something about this character. So if we go and find her, 
and we click on her and we go to bio, now we know that her fear is noise, which was kind of revealed in this thing. So as you notice, the more that we scare these guys, the more this goes up. So with Boo, we're actually going to go ahead and go all the way up to Kinesis now. And that's really going to make this room go shithouse crazy. Alright, so that, that lets us know. Okay, so she has been, her terror bar has been maxed out, and she is going to run the fuck away. And the objective is to get all the sorority gores, girls to actually leave the map. We also want to go ahead and bind Weather Witch. It doesn't really matter where we stick her. Um, let's go ahead and put her out here. We're going to go ahead and put her powers all the way up to Siren Song. Cogjammer's not doing us any good in there. Let's stick him on the TV. And since they're going to be running in and out of this room, we're going to go ahead and stick Clatter Claws. Um. Let's go ahead stick Clatter Claws right here, actually. Put her powers up to Swarm Strike. She's just going to scare the little shit out of her. Of course she's not going to do anything. Is another one gone? So a lot of this game is just kind of waiting. Um, something else that kind of happens if you go to their powers, they actually have a cooldown effect. So as they use them, they have to wait to use them again. So that's why the only use your powers in the presence of a, of a person really kind of helps. So there's another one gone. So. The, the strategy kind of comes in. In this first mission, it's just super easy. You basically just put all your guys down and then just let them go. Just let them have at it. Oh, can we bind her in the same Oh, we can bind her in the same room as Boo. I guess just because it's inside in general. Okay, so she's afraid of spiders. Nancy Bio fears creepy crawly. Subconscious fears are a little bit harder to find. You actually need some specialized spirits for that to happen. Where's your bio? Unknown. Where are you? Go to. You are outside. Let's go ahead and get the Weather Witch over here. Just to kind of really push it with you. talk about right now. I mean, we just kind of wait for this last person to have her terror bar maxed out. It's her bio. I don't know if we want. Yeah. Come on, lady, just get all the way teared out already. Damn it. As you can see, I mean, there's kind of some micromanaging to this. It, I mean, like, it really kind of comes into effect of you really want to try to get, do these missions as fast as possible because there is a time, time factor. There we go. That's the last one. Scared away. Awesome. All right. So the way it's scored is we get, that was terrible, 12 minutes, Jesus, I can do way faster than that. That's what I get for talking too much. So scenario completed, 50,000, we get uh, 100,000 for every spirit that we free, which in this case was just the Weather Witch. Um, 
This is Banished Hunters. Uh, this comes into play later in the game, so we don't really don't have to worry about it right now. You get specific, you get points for um, all these different things, obviously. Scares are the easiest, followed by shocks, then screams, then faints, then paranoia, super paranoia, flee, which everyone did, and insane you get the most points for, which, like I said, insane is the hardest to get because you have to know what their subconscious fears are and exploit those and get their madness bar up before their terror bar is up. So it's a little bit harder because you really have to micromanage your spirits. Um, you have to do it to where specifically, you know, only use the power at this power band, only use their powers in specific, like, you, and you can actually have spirits harass only um, specific targets, but we'll get into that later. Uh, you get uh, scored on your time, and then you get little skulls. Uh, there's up to three pumpkins that you can get. Uh, we got the lowest rank possible. Uh, final score, and then Gold Plasm. Now, Gold Plasm, uh, this comes into play in a little bit, but we actually basically use this to make our spirits uh, stronger. So it's Haunting 101 finished. Since we only did the bare minute... Oh, no, I guess not. Um, the next two ones that are open are Weird Seance and the, Gal the Calamityville Horror. Woo, spooky. Um, but that should be it for this episode. <laughs> that took way longer than I wanted it to. Uh, next time when we come back, we will actually be going into the ghoul room and basically um, kind of showing off that a little bit. This is our home base, basically. And then I'll decide whether I want to do Weird Seance or the Calamityville Horror. So thank you very much for watching and join me next time on Ghostmaster.